Good, Good morning, morning and, and welcome, welcome to our harvest service. service. Welcome to our harvest service. Good morning and welcome to our harvest service. Well, uh, good morning from me and welcome to our service here this morning, whether you're from Weston, from one of our church families or further afield, it's great to have you for our online service here this morning. My name is Reverend Tom Webber. I'm the vicar of uh, both Emmanuel and Christ Church, and it's lovely to welcome you back into the building of Christ Church. I think this is the first time I've done my recordings from here, and it's, it's lovely to be back. Anyway, welcome to our service this morning. It's our harvest service, and it's what we call our all-together service as well. So you're very welcome. We've been giving our harvest offerings to Food Bank. At Emmanuel, over the last few weeks, we've been collecting non-perishable food, and now at Christ Church, we're giving a financial donation. And if you'd like to contribute to that, You'll look under the website, under our church life heading, and then look under Harvest, and you'll see information about giving to Food Bank. And so what could be more appropriate than starting with a great harvest hymn, we plough the fields and scatter. And the, the, the reprise of this hymn reminds us of why we're doing it. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. And thank the Lord and thank the Lord for all his love. It's God we thank for all that we have and all that we enjoy. Let's sing together. as we're thinking about God's faithfulness and generosity we've got a little responsive set of um, words to say which we're going to say as a small group um, Angeline, Nikki and myself. It's a harvest thanksgiving. We thank God for the world he has made for all of his love and care. 
For the warmth of the sun. For the rain which makes things grow. For the woods and the fields. For the sea and the sky. Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. For the flowers and the animals. For the abundance of our food. For those who harvest from land and sea. For those who transport our goods. So, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. And as we think about a generous God, so all of us think about the fact that we haven't been maybe as generous with others as our God is to us. And so all of us, whether boys and girls, men and women, all of us come now to say our sorries to God. I'm going to use um, some short prayers. And at the end of each of the little prayers, if you join with me and say, save us and help us. Let's pray. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us. And help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us, Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. And so may the God of love bring us back to himself and forgive us all our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And so as we think about our generous God, so we're going to be looking at the Old Testament story of Ruth. And Terry's going to be um, helping us to look at that in a few minutes time. But first of all, we're going to hear the overall story of Ruth. Um, it's done it in a little of a light hearted way, something we found on the Internet. But it doesn't half summarise the story well. So I hope you enjoy it and helps you to understand what the story is all about. All right, I will tell the story of a roof. Oh no, not you. Yes, me, Chester Wiggett, a master of the popsicle stick of puppets. And now, the story of a roof. Once upon a time, there was a woman named Ruth. She wasn't an Israelite. She was from Moab, a country Israel didn't like very much. But Ruth, she married an Israelite. As our story begins, Ruth, her Israelite husband, and her husband's mother were all living in the Moab because there was a famine in Israel. A uh, famine? You mean no food? Right, uh, no food. So there they are in the Moab when, uh, oh no, Ruth's husband dies. I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe he got hit by a bus. I don't think they had buses back then. Okay, maybe he got hit by a cow. Yes, sir. A goat? Yes, sir. A near tempered iguana? Yes, sir. Anyway, he's dead. He's gone. No more husband. Now, Ruth's mother-in-law, her name is Naomi. She doesn't have a husband either. He died a while back. Probably another iguana. Chester! Or something. Naomi doesn't really belong in the Moab. She's an Israelite. So as soon as the famine ends, she decides to go back to Israel. Of course, she is old and has no husband and no money. So she'll have to beg for food. Her life will be sad. Well, guess what? Ruth doesn't want that to happen. She loves Naomi. So even though Moab is her home, Ruth says to Naomi, I will come with you. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? I'm telling you, that part makes me cry every time. Yeah, that's really something. It gets you right in the gut. A anyway, this amazing Ruth, she leaves her home and goes to Israel with Naomi to take care of her. Every day she follows the workers in the fields to pick up little bits of grain to, to share with Naomi. Oh, I'm losing it, but... But get this, this is the best part. So she's picking up a bits of grain in a field that belongs to a wealthy man named Boaz, who happens to be related to Naomi's old husband, the one that died in the iguana accident. I don't think he was killed by an iguana. Whatever. Anyway, Boaz sees Ruth into the field and hears about what she's done for Naomi. He hears about her great love for her mother-in-law. And to get this, he falls in love. Love with Ruth. Wonderful Ruth. <laughs> and, and Ruth and Boaz end up getting married. And Boaz takes care of Ruth and takes care of Naomi, her mother-in-law. And everyone is happy and they burst into song. Ever since I saw you, I knew that I loved you and will be together, always and forever. Chester? Uh, always, always. Chester, I don't think they burst into song. The Book of Ruth is not a musical. Well, it should be. Wow, what a great story, and what a crazy way to tell it. 
I think he got most of the facts right, and I'm glad he was corrected. But uh, right at its centre, the life of Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi, was very common in biblical times, and so our present problems will be no great surprise to them. Famine has always happened in our world in different places at different times. And I know that the climate change we've caused has upset this year's weather in England, for our barley and wheat harvests are down. And I had a great crop of French beans and a very poor crop of runner beans. But it's not disastrous. There's plenty for us to be thankful for. Much more so than for Naomi. Famine meant that Naomi and her family moved to the neighbouring country of Moab. But there, her husband and her son, Ruth's husband, died. Most likely from a disease spreading just like we've been seeing this year. And so it was a great sadness. But facing such sadness, Naomi decides to return to her hometown of Bethlehem and sets in motion a wonderful love story that has three important characters in it. First, there's Ruth. Ruth is a faithful person. She trusts through good times and bad. More especially, she has come to know the God that Naomi knows and trusts. And it's clear that she trusts him as well. So she wants to go with Naomi to Bethlehem. Naomi protests, but Ruth is firm in her faithfulness. And she has those wonderful words to say. Every place you go, I will go. Everywhere you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. When they get to Bethlehem, they are refugees. Ruth is an immigrant and they have nothing. So faithful Ruth gleans in the fields. Now gleaning needs perhaps to be explained. God's people showed their care for, for, for poor people by the way in which they behaved at harvest time. And the practice of gleaning was that the harvesters first gathered the crop, the men cutting and the women picking up the bits and pieces. But little bits would drop to the ground. Not everything was picked up. And what you dropped, you left. And it gave a small free harvest to the poor people who could come and pick up all those bits. Ruth is faithful in caring for both herself and for Naomi. And she gleans in the fields, picking up the bits so that they have enough to eat. Maybe we've had a hard time this year and many of us have suffered loss in one way or another. Perhaps we've been ill or someone close to us has died from the virus. Maybe there's been a funeral you couldn't go to. Maybe you have lost your job or some of your income. But we've also lost meeting up with others, lost events we were looking forward to, lost a sense of security amidst all the uncertainty that seems to be around us. How have we remained faithful in our trust of God? And what little things have we gleaned, picked up, that remind us that God is faithful and goes with us in all circumstances and events? Ruth reminds us that when times are tough, we need to continue to trust in God and to say thank you for all that we do have. God is always faithful. He's the next character in our story. And long before Ruth, God showed his faithfulness to Noah by showing him the rainbow in the sky and saying it will be a sign 
to him that God would be faithful to him despite the flood that he'd gone through. And long after Ruth, the prophet Joel speaks after a famine caused by locusts and reassures people with God's promise. For he says that God says, I will repay the years the locusts have eaten. And so it goes on. God always shows his faithfulness. And we know that there is always the possibility of resurrection. But here comes the third character. Ruth and God dwell in faithfulness. Boaz, well, he's a well-off farmer. And he's also generous. His response to a generous God who's blessed him is to be generous in return. He sees Ruth's hard work and tells her to come any time. And he even makes sure there's plenty for her to take. His kindness blesses Ruth. We can become fixed on what we might not have and lose sight of the things we still have plenty of. In what ways, I wonder, can we consider ourselves rich? We still have a bountiful supply of food. We still have homes and families, even if they're more distant. Where have you been blessed? And how can you share that with others? This harvest, we need to think about what we have in plenty and maybe what we can share. One way we can share is through the food bank that helps poor people around us. And this year we're not asking for food, but to give gifts of money so that the food bank can stock those places where their shelves are empty, the things that they particularly lack. We'll hear more about that later. But it's not just about money. Boaz is generous, yes. He pays off the debts that Naomi's family left behind so that he can give them back the land and the house that they had before they left. He is generous in that way. But it's not just being generous with money. Generosity is about where our heart is. Boaz knows God's heart and has a heart for others as well. Do we have a heart for others? Maybe we've been able to be generous to people, perhaps in the way we've phoned folks up and had a chat with them on the phone. Maybe the way we've stopped with neighbours at a safe distance to catch up with them. Maybe it's because you've known God's peace, God's reassurance, God's hope in these last few months. And that's been a blessing to you. If so, that too is something you can share with others as you tell them about how God has been gracious to you these past months. It's good that we can share with our hearts. Well, we have a faithful and a generous God. We have a faithful Naomi and a generous Boaz. It's no surprise that as Ruth and Boaz get to know each other, they fall in love and end up. Uh, no, I think we'll hear the end of the story from the Bible itself. Ruth chapter 4 verses 13 to 17. So Boaz took Ruth and married her. The Lord let her become pregnant and she gave birth to a son. The woman told Naomi, Praise the Lord who gave you this grandson and may he become famous in Israel. He will give you new life and he will take care of you in your old age. This happened because of your daughter-in-law. She loves you and she is better for you than seven sons. She has given birth to your grandson. Naomi took the boy, held him in her arms, and cared for him. The neighbours gave him his name. These women said, This boy was born for Naomi. The neighbours named him Obed. Obed was Jesse's father, 
and Jesse was the father of David. So, Ruth and Boaz get married and we can understand the joy, not only their joy, but the joy of the wider family and the villagers and everybody rejoicing. But they don't only get married. They have a baby boy. And this is where Ruth and Boaz and God all come together in our story. He is the generous, faithful God who is always there. He was there during the bitter times, staying as faithful to Ruth as she was to him. He was there in the generosity and the kindness of Boaz and there in their marriage, for it is all part of his purpose. God's general faithfulness is always there so that after the bad times have passed, something good beyond our imagining happens. And that is often the way with God. This is part of God's purpose for their child that they named Obed would have a son and the son was called Jesse and Jesse too had sons. And one of his sons was called David, the great king of Israel. And one of David's sons would be called Jesus, born in Bethlehem. And through that son, God's son, we would know God's grace forever. God's harvest is one of hope, one of future, one of rejoicing. We come to this harvest and we are called, we are called, we are called still to be faithful and generous. And you might like to follow some of uh, what we've been talking about by using our family pack that's available to download online. But we come to this harvest with a great hope in a faithful and generous God. And we give thanks for that. May God bless you. So just to let you know the things that are coming up next, in a few moments time, we're going to be listening to Pat Altshaw as she reflects on what generosity has meant for her. And then Tracy Jones is going to be leading us in our prayers. But first of all, we're going to hear a song. Um, it's to a familiar tune you'll probably recognise, but with new words. And um, it's called God the Maker of the Heavens. And it's on our theme of being generous. And so the first verse says, show us how to live lives of gratitude and care.
Good morning and welcome to our sofa interview today. Uh, it's an outside sofa interview. So I'm going to be interviewing my mum, Pat, about generosity, like we've been thinking about this morning. So hello. Hello. <laughs> um, are there times when people have shown you generosity? Many times in the past <laughs> and in the recent past. So is there a one time in particular that stands out to you? There is from long ago when you were little. Um, I think it was the first time your brother was going to camp and we didn't have a lot of money. We didn't. It cost £33 for the whole week <laughs> <laughs> and he'd been told to bring 50 pence a day pocket money which was another £3.50. I wasn't too worried about that bit, the first bit. So I did say that it would take me probably till the week before to save this money and that was okay and I saved and saved got £33, took it into church on the Sunday before he was due to go handed it to our pastor's wife who handed it straight back with an envelope and she said you keep your money we told the church that it might be a struggle and they didn't know how much she needed but they've had a whip round and I think you will find there's enough money in there when I opened it, there was £36.50, <laughs> which to me seemed quite miraculous. And obviously God was at the back of that doing the prompting, yes. as they hadn't known what I needed. Yeah, that's amazing. That was great. And it was the beginning of many years of camp. <laughs> um, yes. Are there more recent times um, when are. people have shown you generosity? Um, there was one incident where it was, again, money, when I was struggling a bit after I moved here trying to sell books um, and I got an envelope in my pigeonhole in church one Sunday with a handmade card with £20 in mm. and I don't know to this day who gave me that but it was a lovely thought and it was very much needed mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for that and other ways maybe not not money or other ways that people have shown you lots of ways where people have given time um, Last year, a lot of people gave time and prayers when it was a tough year for our family, um, just sitting and listening so I could offload. This last few months with lockdown has been not easy for John, um, being depressed anyway, it's not helped the depression, having to be <laughs> locked away. Um, and people have given him time to talk to him of late when the restaurants were open they've gone out for a curry with him that's done him a world of good so it's done me a world of good it's a win-win situation um people have also sat and listened you know if i needed to talk and a great thing of late i've been redesigning this back garden which was just all gravel and now is full <laughs> of trees and plants I've had help with that as well, mm -hmm. um, stones donated, plants donated, seeds donated, actual help donated in, in the digging and the clearing. Um, and that's done me good too because, well, the results speak for themselves. It is a beautiful garden, we <laughs> might get the camera to pan round on it at the end. Um, anything else you want to share with us? Well, there is one thing that I remember, and I've quoted it many times to people who were tried to do what I was trying to do, um, it was Angela De Beer. I can't remember what on earth she was trying to do for me and I was trying to stop her doing it and she looked me straight in the eye and she said, don't deny me the blessing <laughs> and I've quoted that as I've said to people who are, oh no you mustn't, oh no you can't do that um, and it's very true, it's not the reason why people do things. But when you do do something for somebody else, you do receive a blessing mm. because it's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be generous. He wants us to share our time and our talents with people. Yeah. So that sticks in my mind. Don't deny me the blessing. That seems like a good place to stop. Do you just want to pan that camera around to look at the garden? And thank you very much, Mum, for that interview. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. As we celebrate harvest, we thank you for all that you have provided for us over the year. Thank you for the apples on the trees, the corn in the fields and the blackberries in the hedgerows. Thank you for the farm workers who work long hours to bring us the food we buy. Please protect them as they continue to provide our food during autumn and winter. We pray for the parts of the world where food is not in such plentiful supply. And we pray that as we live in one of the wealthy nations, you will nudge us to play our part by sharing what we have with others who have less, whether in our own community or further away. Lord, we thank you for the medics and scientists around the world who are working tirelessly on treatments and vaccines for COVID-19. Please provide them with the resources they need in order to succeed. We pray for our government that you will foster in them a determination to collaborate globally to tackle environmental and humanitarian issues. Please help them to focus on long-term solutions and give them a vision of a world that is not driven by consumerism. Father God, we pray for our children and young people getting used to new classes and courses with all the difficult new rules in place. Please keep them safe and help them to settle in, relax, make friends and develop into the people you want them to be. We pray for those known to us who are struggling financially with relationships, with their own health or the health of their loved ones. Lord, you know what each of those individuals need. So we pray that you will provide what is needed in terms of practical, emotional and spiritual support through those who are able to give it. Bring your peace and healing to all who are suffering in our two churches. We pray that they will not suffer alone, but will be able to share their burdens with their church family. We pray for everyone attending the service of remembrance this afternoon to commemorate those who have passed away in our church families. We thank you for their lives and pray that the service will bring comfort and hope for the future to those attending. Father God, help us to follow the example set by Jesus, our servant King, in serving each other and our communities. Please prompt us and guide us this week about how we can show your love to others as we remember your immense generosity to us. Amen. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so our final song this morning is one called the Compassion Hymn. And obviously it's a time of harvest we think of going out and showing compassion to the world. Um, but this is not something we do on our own strength. But it is simply because God has shown us his kindness, his compassion most of all in the cross that Jesus died on, but also in all the good gifts he's given us. And I guess it's that in particular we remember this Harvest Sunday.
And so, with God's compassion inside of us, so we offer our world, our neighbours, all of that compassion. There is an everlasting kindness lavished on us when the radiance of heaven came to rescue the lost. You called the sheep without a shepherd. For your streams of forgiveness and the shade of your rest. And with compassion for the hurting, you reached out your hand as the rain ran to meet you and the dead breathed again. You saw behind the eyes of sorrow and shed in our tears. Let the sign of the weary, let the children draw near. What boundless love, what fathomless grace, you have shown us a word of compassion. And so as we now come to the end of our service, so our final prayer talks about the joy and love of compassion of God spilling out into our lives. May God's joy be in our hearts, into our world. And my goodness, doesn't our world need us at the moment? And between us all, do join me if you'd like to in the actions as we say them together. May God's joy be in our our hearts. May God's peace be in our world and may God's love be known between us. Amen. <laughs>